Not too long ago, for my brand website, I built this metrics module to simply capture custom anonymous metrics. An example of that would be clicking on a specific product will save that user interaction to the database and in that way I can have an overview of the analytics for the different products. The limitation of that is that I can only track user interactions that happen inside of my application. I cannot track whether someone clicked on the product link in an email I sent them. So let's solve that problem. If you want your own copy of this brand website with a fully functioning blog with the markdown editor and all of the modules that I showed on the schema, you can grab your own copy on my Patreon by simply becoming a member. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Let's dive in. If you don't know what an email campaign is, it's basically a sequence of separate emails that will be sent out on a trigger. Such a trigger can be uh, a new newsletter subscriber joined, for example, or somebody purchased a product. And every email can have a different delay. So the first email can be sent right after the action and then the second 24 hours after that one and so on. And such a campaign consists of those emails with a delay on the site. If I click that first one, it uses that same markdown editor. So I'm basically uh, creating my HTML mails in markdown and then I have the HTML preview and then the actual mail will also be sent out as an HTML email. So let's imagine I sent you this HTML email and you click on this link to download the Nougat packages directly from the Azure Blob Storage. Then you're going from your email inbox directly to the Azure Blob Storage. And there's no way for me to know whether you click that link or not. So we'll have to find a way to intervene to save a record to the database when after you click that link and then redirect you to the actual uh, URL where you can download these packages. So that's exactly what we'll do. I didn't come up with that solution. That's actually how the bigger email marketing software operates as well. So let's take a look at this email sent with uh, ConvertKit. If we inspect these links, you'll see they all go to ConvertKit click.convertkit.mail.com but if I click one so let's say let's take that one it's actually redirecting me to the actual link that I'm expecting so to the backend developer roadmap but you saw it leads first to convertkit and then convertkit redirects to the actual source so what I did is before I actually sent this HTML email, I replaced this link to go to an endpoint of my minimal API. And that endpoint then redirects to the original URL, so the Azure blob storage. Similarly, like you just saw, this link going first to ConvertKit and then to the original URL. In the code that would look as follows, I take that markdown of the email that is going to end up in the, in the mailbox. Before it ends up in the mailbox, I alter that markdown to replace all of the links in there with a custom link going to my minimal API endpoint. That custom link contains three parameters, trace ID to be stored in the database and matched with a subscriber or a record. The metric type of linked clicked and encoded URL is basically the original redirect URL. I had to encode that to not mess up these uh, values. And then the endpoint accepts that encoded string, decodes that string and gets those three parameters out what it first does is create a send email metric so stores 
that interaction into my database before it redirects to the original URL. So, so this command simply creates a new metric based on the sent email that I stored to the database when sending out that email. That's the new metric, so that's going to contain link clicked. So with that setup, I can now know how many people click on which link. That could be the product link or the sponsor link. But then we have another important metric, the open rate, which would tell me how many people actually read the email, opened that email. Tracking that is similar, but more tricky because we need to know when someone opened the email, which is not easy to do. You could think about onload events with JavaScript, but uh, most of the email providers likely remove that kind of behavior. So how ConvertKit does it is with a tracking pixel. So if I open the source of this email, I see at the bottom, I see an image tag that with a link open.convertkit, so not click.convertkit, but open.convertkit, and then a hash, which is probably an identifier for my bit, like the trace ID that I have, but more. And then if we actually open that link, so I'm going to mess up the metrics. But then you get this, a tracking pixel. And I'm zoomed in at 500%. <laughs> so that's actually a one by one pixel that you can barely see. And that's kind of the point of it. It's so small, first off, that you don't notice it. And secondly, that it probably doesn't take a lot of resources or time to load it. You could do the same with any of the images that's in, that are inside these uh, mills, but maybe less likelihood that it does what it's supposed to do or that it fails to load or something like that or gets blocked. So I did exactly the same. I created a one by one pixel. So that's and the one by one pixel on my Azure Blob Store. And then if you see, I add that to the markdown.html, I do plus that tracking pixel, which is basically just a image tag. And this is where it's similar with the link clicks. We also first want to go to an endpoint on our minimal API to then redirect to the actual location of that pixel. So that's what I'm doing um, again encoding these three parameters but this time it has a metric type of read so opened or read instead of the link clicked and then that url is the pixel the url where the pixel lives so that url now should be loaded in this image tag as soon as the user opens the email will hit my API endpoint with that specific trace ID and so on. And what you could then do is get even more user info from the HTTP request, from the headers. You could, if I'm not mistaken, get the location of the user based on the browser or that they are using. But I think that's a bit tricky. You're no longer tracking anonymous uh, info, then you're really tracking personally and identifiable information, which uh, falls under the same category as the cookies and the whole uh, GDPR regulation. So I would recommend to be a bit careful about that. It's a bit of a gray area. Those tracking pixels are commonly used for email marketing and the large email marketing software uses the, those things like you saw with ConvertKit. And there's a lot of libraries out there to create such things and track such things, but it's not really consensual because the receiver of that email didn't really agree upon being tracked, the, their behavior being tracked. 
You could of course state the usage of tracking pixels in your terms and conditions, your terms of service, your privacy policy before the user signs up on your website. There is a consensual way as well and that's by setting a few headers on the email that you're sending and those headers are disposition notification to and then the email address it should send to and the return receipt to and that same email address and what happens then is whenever the user gets that email they're also going to get a prompt a notification that they can accept or decline to ask so basically to inform them that the sender has requested the read receipt and then you can either accept or decline that and uh, that way the then an email notification is sent to the sender saying that you read the email but not only that's not that easy to work with because of course it's just sending notification and then you would have to set up an IMAP uh, connection to then re read the amount of receipts and so on and likely most of those pop-ups prompts will be denied so that's probably the reason why the larger uh, email marketing software chooses for those tracking pixels. So that's how we can track whether someone clicks a link in the email we sent them or even when someone opened the emails we sent them. There's probably more metrics to capture but I think those were the most tricky ones. If you want your own copy of these Nougat packages that contain a lot of useful code, you can do so by going to my website, kisco.com and the products, downloads, and you can get yourself the Nougat packages for free when you sign up. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if this video was valuable. And most of my code you can find on my Patreon. So make sure to join or to go to the shop and get your own copy. See you in the next video.